Welcome to God Encounters. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Today my guest is Melody Carroll. Melody graduated from Rama Bible Training College in Tulsa, Oklahoma and served as assistant pastor for 18 years. She has spoken for women's conferences, facilitated church small groups, volunteered in music ministry, and she leads weekly Bible studies and has a passion for prayer and mm -hmm. intercession, which I'm very grateful for. <laughs> Melody's one of my intercessors, and I always know that she will send that little text back saying, I'm praying, and I know she is. Hallelujah. <laughs> you need those people in your life. Well, you have quite a story, Melody. Yes. And so I want you to share, because you've had some divine God encounters. Mm -hmm. So start with your background, your okay. childhood. Okay. Well, in 1963, uh, when I was born, um, I was six months old, and I was born in Seoul, Korea. Okay. And then I was adopted by pastors Glenn and Mary Duncan, who pastored the Open Bible Church in Woodland, Washington. Okay. So that's where I was raised. Okay. So um, the story of um, how they adopted me is miraculous, because they... Um, uh, they had one uh, daughter, Rosalie. She was 12 years older than m m me. Mm -hmm. And they had always wanted, um, a, this is my mother's words, and this is back in the 60s, okay? Yeah. She wanted a little oriental baby, a little, Aww. you know, dark, she said, dark complected, Aww. dark hair, dark eye baby. Yeah. And my sister uh, was the opposite. And so anyway, she just kind of put it on the back burner. But um, through the years, as my sister got older, my sister desired and prayed for a little um, Asian sister wow. or brother wow. and then at the same time my mother did too and uh, so um, in 63 my parents were up in Vancouver Canada at a pastor's conference and she was just praying and there's a lady that came up to her and said you should adopt a little um, Korean baby because she had two little Korean girls wow. and they were adopted through Holtz Adoption Agency out of Crest, uh, Crestwood, Oregon or wow. Crestwell, Oregon. Okay. So anyway, um, she came back um, to Woodland because that's where my mom and dad were pastoring mm -hmm. and it was during a Wednesday night service and my mom was up at the altar um, just praying, kneeling and praying and she looked down and there was a hymnal there and it said Melodies of Praise and she said, you know, if I ever get a little girl, I'll name her Melody. Aww. Then she turned around and looked at the <laughs> the back or the, um, the pew right there, the front pew yeah. where Rosalie was sitting yeah. and she was sitting there with her um, girlfriends but Rosalie was looking down in her lap and after the service was over, um, Rosalie came up to her mom and said, Mama, I was holding my little baby sister and we're to name her Melody. Wow. And it just confirmed oh what um, the Lord had put in my um, my mom's heart. Well, of course, my dad, obviously, um, he wasn't <laughs> for it, you know, but, but um, Rosalie and my mom both prayed, um, Lord, if this truly is your will, then yeah. he'll dream about the baby. And he dreamt about adopting that whole night. And he woke up the next morning and he said, we need to adopt a little old baby. Wow. So they started the procedures. And uh, so this wow. was in March um, of 63. And then um, by September of 63, um, I was brought over here. In the meantime, though, they did um, have two babies that were supposed to come over to, at separate times, but both of them passed away before they were able to leave Seoul, oh, Korea. Oh, my goodness. So, so that I, had to be devastating It was on very your devastating. And my mother, she did um, fight a lot of fear. Um, but the Lord spoke to her one night, um, Isaiah 43, that says, I will bring your seed from the east. And she knew wow. that um, it was God's will for them to get me. So they um, wow. put in the papers again, and um, the adoption agency sent the third baby, which was me. And um, Mr. Kim, he was the facilitator that brought the eight babies over at the same time, had me on the airplane, and he said I was going between life and death. I was so sick. Um, I was six months old, weighed eight pounds. I was in the last stages of starvation. Oh, my goodness. I had rickets and boils all over my body. Oh, my goodness. And uh, meanwhile, um, back here um, in the States, um, my my parents had a pastor friends, of course, and his name was Reverend Harris, and he lived in Longview, Washington, and he saw a vision, and he saw a light in a blanket, and it went from South Korea, 
and then it, when it landed in Sal, uh, in San Francisco, he saw the light go out, and he knew that that was the enemy trying to take my life. Wow! And so he immediately said, immediately prayed and said, "No, devil, you cannot have this baby." Wow! Um, so he saw the light go back on, and then the blanket f uh, went from San Francisco and landed in Portland. And so when um, they uh, I arrived in September of '63, um, he did tell my parents. I thought that um, she was dead for sure on the airplane and so they rushed me to the hospital and and the doctor that examined me he said you know it's a it's really nice thing that you did but she probably won't survive she probably won't live but my sister had had a dream <laughs> and she saw herself and me uh, running through fields of uh, flowers Aww. and the doctor had said um, even if she does survive she will never walk so my sister knew that um, I would walk that I would survive and you know, I would walk you know what I love about this story is, <laughs> against all odds, yeah. right? The enemy kept trying to take your yes. life, but he kept saying to your family members yes. one by one, yes. this is what's really going to happen. Yes. Don't be dismayed by what you're seeing and experiencing. But I want to go back for a second. You were <laughs> six months old and only weighed eight pounds. Yes. Yep. Oh my word. Yeah. And it was your typical, you know how you see pictures of, of the little starving babies on yeah. TV with the, the bloated stomachs yeah. and all of that. That that was me. That had to be disheartening yeah. to your mother even yeah. though. I mean, here's this baby I've been longing for <laughs> and look at the condition this child's in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so um, the doctor said she'll never walk. She will probably won't live. So um, my mom and dad, and then they had a brother who was a, a minister. They laid hands on me, and God immediately healed me. Wow. And the next morning in the hospital when they went back, um, my s sister stayed the whole night in the room with me. But the next morning mm -hmm. when I went back, um, they said, um, she's fine, and she is eating anything she can, you know, you can wow. feed her. And so they brought me home the next day because of God's miraculous. Power. Wow. So they had had confirmation through the written word of God yes. and then through other ministers that said yeah. to adopt and that wow. she would be fine and, and all the things. So I, I know that God You're heals. a miracle. I know God yes. does miracles. Yes. Yeah. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, <laughs> yes. and forever. Amen. Yeah, if he did it in the 60s, he'll do it today. <laughs> right. You know, so anyway. Wow. Um, so yeah, so God healed me and um, I was walking when I should have walked. I crawled when I should have crawled. I, I, I loved to eat back then you know and <laughs> yeah. I still do yeah, right. <laughs> you know? and so um, I know God is a miracle working God yeah so then um, I grew up in Woodland grew up in the open Bible church there where my mom and dad pastored okay. and uh, um, I have felt like I've always been in ministry always involved in ministry mm. and I even knew since I was a little girl that I was called to minister mm. and so of course it was a small little town small little church but mm -hmm. I would help uh, be in the choir you know help with Sunday school teaching yeah yeah. different things like that yeah. and then um I uh, uh, married right out of high school, and my husband and I uh, went to Rama Bible College down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, because he was called in, in ministry too. And so at that time, we're thinking pastoring, you know, so we go down to college, and, yeah. and then we move back, and then um, we uh, become the assistant pastors of Faith Center Church for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm involved in ministry my whole life. My yeah. pastors were, uh, I mean, my uh, parents were ministers, yeah. my husband was ministry, yeah. but then I knew that, I, that God had called me too. Yeah. Um, because I had heard my story of how God had miraculously raised me from the dead. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Lord, I know you exist. I know you've called me. Right. And then yeah. um, prayer and intercession has always been in my heart. And then ministering to others and praying for others mm -hmm. has always been um, mm -hmm. a passion of mine. And, mm -hmm. and I knew that I was called to do that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, then we're uh, assistant pastors, but then um, we, um, I went through a divorce. And I raised my daughter and my son. I still mm. stayed at that church and stayed uh, faithful and involved there. And I had the support of the pastors and the staff That's and, good. and friends. So I'm very thankful for that. And, and I'm very thankful that I kept my children in church. Yes. And that is one thing. If anybody ever asks me, you know, when you go through a, a drama or a trauma, um, not just divorce, but any kind of loss, any kind of um, going on, don't run from God. You run to God. Good. Who's going to be your stabilizer? That's good God advice. God is. Yes. You don't run from him. You run to him. Yeah. So I, I kept my children involved in church and they, they grew up and, and uh, my daughter is 30 years old and married and, and uh, my son is 27. 
seven and and all you know my daughter and son-in-law and my son I'm proud of all three of them they're wonderful adults mm -hmm. and they live in the local area awesome. and so um, so God um, has done great healing. Uh, you know, your show is about God encounters. Well, mm -hmm. one God encounter was how I was uh, um, adopted and healed. Yeah. Another God encounter is how God just sustained and healed um, and, and kept my children and I during mm -hmm. that whole time. Right. Because whenever you face anything painful, yeah. you know, you fight hurt and anger and yes. depression, yes. Uh, fear, anxiety, yes. you know, er hopelessness, helplessness, you know, um, yeah. how am I going to do this? How am I going to um, face this? How, what kind of future am I going right. to have? How, what can I do for my children? Yeah. How are my children going to turn out you know and like I said it was um, uh, involvement at the church but it was also the Word of God the written Word of God mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit in me and mm -hmm. in my children mm -hmm. and I was I was determined from the very beginning to never not get bitter I was determined wow. to walk in love and forgiveness That's huge. because I knew if you, if you don't forgive, it only hurts you. That's right. It, it doesn't hurt um, anybody else. Yeah. Not everybody gets that picture right off the bat, though. That's it's, true. It's not easy to do. It's when not you, easy to do. Yeah. And everybody has their own certain way of dealing with things. Yeah. You know, and so I How know, long of a process, if I could ask? Oh, because um, it was painful to you. You didn't want the divorce. No, no. So um, how long of a process was that for you for healing? The first two years were the hardest, okay? The first two years um, uh, was the time of adjustment, the time of really um, examining myself, judging mm. myself, mm. you know, going to God. Because you, you, you face rejection, you, you, you uh, yes. face all these different yeah. emotions. Well, and we play. Yes. We play the recorder over and yes. over, the tape over and over again, you know. And yeah, we do those things, but mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm also thrilled to hear that you had the support yes of the ministry staff there that's huge yes it is I, I, they're just wonderful pastors um, pastor Glenn and Theresa Johnson and so um, that was part of it too mm -hmm. and then um, obviously with the support of family friends and church mm -hmm. um, the Word of God you know the Holy Spirit yeah. because he's our comforter our right. guide our our advocate our strengthener yes. you know and he's our coach yes. he coaches us through life yes and Amen. look to him as your coach look to him as your that's your good. source of, of strength, yes. spirit, soul, and body, yes. and financially and socially. Just just every area he met. Um, I remember um, one time um, the kids were younger. Caleb was um, entering junior high in Alley High School. And um, of course, they're, they're kids, they're human, they're going to go through struggles. But um, one of um, the things that he was, my son was facing, it was going to be an award simile um, at their school, at his school. And so um, before that, I was fighting anxiety and fear because I wanted it to be a good night for my son to show my son you know what we choose to love and mm -hmm. forgive and we choose mm -hmm. to do the right thing and mm -hmm. and so that uh, words assembly ended up be one of the best nights for him because he kept oh. winning award after award the wow. teachers would call him up and wow. you know and so the Lord was just showing me and then just different things he did for my daughter as she was growing up and and went off to college and and I can just see the hand of the Lord in every situation that would come up, you know, and uh, um, he would heal their, he healed our hearts. He just mm -hmm. provided for us financially, mm -hmm. and and uh, you know, so every step of the way, God has been with my family and I. Yeah, that's you know. good. And you remain single. Yes, yes, I am. Um, I, you know, it's like Lord, your will be done. Okay, you know? so so you're open if I there was open. somebody I there. Am. But it's not like I'm looking. Yeah, and no. it's not like I I, I have to right. get remarried or yeah. I'm desperate or anything right. like no, that. No, that's good. You know, um, so it's like Lord, you know what? It's um, your will, your kingdom come, your will be done. Yeah. When it comes to my pathway in life. Amen. You know, that's good. <laughs> um, wow, that's quite a journey. So. In what way would you say God speaks to you most? Through the written word and then through that still small voice, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit in me. Okay. And um, uh, I, I do believe in um, being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. So I, I speak in tongues a lot yeah. and praise and worship. And, um, and then when the, the Lord is um, using me to minister to other people, He'll flow through me through word of knowledge and prophecy. That's, that's how I flow in the giftings the most. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, to be honest, I, 
really don't have a lot of dreams or visions, mm. uh, but it's it's just mainly the Holy Spirit speaking to me and a, yeah. the, a scripture or you know will rise up and the word that comes up is always based on a scripture because it's like okay I, yeah. I want to make sure it's founded yeah you know no, and that's that, very and, good and the basis is the written word of God yeah that's it's, a very good foundation for prophetic words and yeah to be based on the word of God that's mm -hmm. beautiful nice okay. <laughs> So what else would you like to share with us today? Um, I just want to share that um, the Holy Spirit, he's, He guides us. You know how it says in, in John um, that He is our um, shepherd mm -hmm. and that we are His sheep mm -hmm. and we follow His voice and the stranger's voice we will not follow. Mm. And that's one of the um, scriptures I speak over my children daily. Mm, Even they're good. adults, it's like they're not going to follow a stranger's voice. That's they good. follow the, the voice of the Good Shepherd. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I encourage. Um, and I, you're, one of the things I love about you is that you flow in the gifting of the Holy Spirit. Mm. You flow, I can tell you flow um, by hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit when you minister mm. through your singing and your music mm. and your word you give. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one reason why when I met you, it's like, oh, not do we just have the Holy Spirit in common, mm -hmm. but I felt we were kindred spirits because we tend to flow the same direction, yeah. Yeah. you know. And yeah. so that's what I encourage you and, and whoever is watching. Yeah that you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit that's in you. You are of God, little children, and greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. That is good advice. <laughs> and uh, one other thing I wanted to say is yeah. that, Cheryl, I just count it an honor to be here with you today, Aww. and thank you for inviting me. Of course. And um, like I said, whenever you text me and you, and you need prayer, yeah. it's, uh, it's an honor that I'm on your prayer team <laughs> because Aww. I feel like that's my ministry yeah. right now yeah. is supporting other people yeah. and men, you know that are out in the um, the front. And so, because I'm kind of in the background right now in this time in my life, yeah. you know, but. Uh, well, you are, but you're you're on heaven's forefront. <laughs> Angels partner with our prayers. Amen. Yes, amen. You know? And there's power in those prayers, especially when the word of God is backing it up because the enemy can't argue with the word. That's right. So I want to talk about something you're very familiar with, which is intercession. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so can you share a time? I know a time when I was praying for you one night. That was pretty crazy. Oh, <laughs> yes, I remember. Well, there, there's been more than once, but yeah. there's one particular one. Yeah. Were you talking about the angels yeah, that well, were in my room? And the armor. I saw yes. armor, armor came on you yes. and stuff. Yeah, that was kind of cool. In fact, I still have the little picture you text me. She oh. text, uh, Cheryl text me a picture of, <laughs> of a doll with armor on it. She said, this is how I envision you, Melody. Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, I, I, I take that. I receive <laughs> yeah, that word. Yeah. Well, plus I've seen my own armor too. Really? I've seen my armor. And it wow. changes at times. Wow. Sometimes for different assignments, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I always ask the Lord when I go for my walks, you know, in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. what am I wearing today and which angel is with me? I have this one angel, it's kind of crazy. He's really tall and thin and he has these kind of smaller wings for a guy that big. And uh -huh. I'm like, well, I'm not going to argue with right. you. You made him. <laughs> those, right. those wings are going to get him wherever he needs to go, right? But it just seems oh. odd that his wings are not real huge with the height of his body. But whatever. Um, you know, but I see those different things. But yeah. So in intercession, what are some things that you've, I'm sure you've had some supernatural encounters before during intercession. So things that maybe the Lord has shown you. Anything come to your mind? that God has shown you at times and there's been um, times when it's a lot of times it's when I'm ministering um, to I, I mainly minister to women but I can to men you know yeah. pray for men and stuff yeah. but um, uh, two uh, two specific times I remember this is years ago and I was uh, doing a women's small group and praying um, for uh, different women in the room mm -hmm. it was in a home mm -hmm. and uh, one of the ladies was um, her and her husband were believing God to sell their house and the Lord used me for prophecy that your house will be sold this week 
Wow. And, Praise and it, God. it did. And it happened. It sold, yes. Nice. Um, another um, time is when um, uh, this just happened recently. Um, I was praying um, uh, for a lady, a friend, and I just felt that um, we should be sp just spend this time on the phone, just speaking in tongues and just praying in the Holy Spirit. Okay. And we spent time doing that. And then after we hung up, about an hour later, her um, son-in-law passed away mm. with a massive heart attack. <gasps> And so um, wow. I knew then after, after all that said and done, I knew that I was tracking and hearing the Holy Spirit. He wanted us to be praying in tongues because he mm. knew what was ahead for mm. my friend and her daughter and, mm. and the, the children and grandchildren and everything. Yeah. And so because her son-in-law passed away, yeah. you know, within an hour after our prayer time. So it's just, it's a lot of times it's not big miraculous stories that I hear about, but I do get feedback from friends and right. family that, Melody, you prayed this prayer, or you gave me this scripture, or you yeah. spoke this word over me, mm -hmm. and I find out that it encouraged them, or yes. it, it helped them, or it spoke to them, or, um, yes. you know, or it's, it told the Lord kind of confirmed to them what they knew. You know, if, if the Lord gives me a word about something that's going to happen to you in the future, mm -hmm. it, it's always a confirming word, yeah. that because that's how prophecy is supposed to go. It's yeah. supposed to confirm what's yeah. already in your spirit, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And so I get feedback like that. So they may not be big, huge stories to you mm -hmm. or, or the, uh, those listening, but they mean a lot to me because it's like, Lord, I know that you're using yeah. me. And, and, you know, it confirms the word and yes. it confirms what's happening in their lives. Yes. And it's prayer that's being answered. Yes. And so yeah. that's that's kind of how I can answer it. Is, yeah. You know, if that's well, how the Lord uses Well, 90% of me. our life is every day, whatever, you know, it's those... God moments that are always like, you know, exactly monumental markers in our lives when those things happen and then it's fun. But yeah. But I mean, you give your life to prayer on a daily basis. I do. Yes. Which prayer is huge. Reading. Yes, yeah. I do. And, and there's been, okay, that's the public times when I've prayed for people. And mm -hmm. obviously in meetings, I've done it in small mm -hmm. groups and women's conferences. But then my private time, yeah. um, uh, one time I do remember being in my living room and I could, um, I was in a time of praying and intercession, and I do a lot of praise and worship, and and I will sing praise and worship songs, my own, yeah. you know. And, yeah. um, I will start out with songs I know, praise and worship songs that I know, yeah. um, but then uh, it will turn into my own singing to the Lord, my own words or whatever. And um, one, one time I was in my living room, and I was face down on my carpet, just praying and, and, and just speaking in tongues and praising, and I could feel the presence of God in my head. House. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I don't feel the presence of God all the time, but, it was but you stronger. know, you know, you know when it's different, <laughs> right? It's on an, another level, yes, a on stronger a different... manifestation exactly. of the presence of God. Yeah. yeah. So I, I will have times like that, but there's yeah. one particular time. It was about a couple months ago. Yeah. And it's like, Lord, you know, if and you if don't want to leave, those, you don't, you no. don't. And, he, and if, if the Lord had chose to actually open my eyes, I knew, knew that I would see the presence of God. I would yeah. see God right there, yeah. you know, yeah. or, or Jesus or my angels or whatever, right. which I haven't seen that. But, yeah. but, you know, you know, by the spirit of God that, right. that yeah. his presence is here with you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Love it. Well, I know we met through Vicki Adams. Yes. Who's quite a lady. <laughs> she is. I love her so much. Yeah. I ministered with her yesterday. It was fun. Oh. So um, what's something else you can share? Now, you've ministered to women's groups and things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, how does God speak to you through, you know, to women? Like, what is your heart for women? What, what do you want to see happen in women's lives that you minister to women? I want healing uh, for their physical bodies okay. and then healing for their soul, Good. their mind, will, and emotions. Good. Good. So an inner mm -hmm. as and well as yes. physical. Yes. Yeah. Which we've learned are both connected. They are. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. If you're finding anxiety and stress, that if, uh, that is going to manifest in your physical Very body. Very good. Yes. And and trust me, I've had physical challenges, mm -hmm. and um and uh, but the Lord, you know, I, I believe that I have received my healing, Amen. And, and it's in that process of manifesting. Yes. So I I know what it's like to go through a dark time. Yeah. You know, whether it's physically or mentally or emotionally mm -hmm. or with your children, as far as you know, you see them having challenges and mm -hmm. and your heart breaks for them and right. you just you you go to God you yeah go, and prayer and intercession for them we have lots of things we can pray about don't we <laughs> <laughs> totally yes so um 
what else is on your heart? Um, just that I think the biggest thing on my heart is ministering and praying for healing and uh, in every area. Mm -hmm. Like I just said, mm -hmm. uh, for the physical body, mm -hmm. for your soul, mm -hmm. uh, for your finances, for your family. Because mm -hmm. us being moms, uh, children our grandchildren are the dearest to our hearts. And mm -hmm. not that it is, isn't to dads. Mm -hmm. You know, men love their children just as much. Yeah. You know, I know there's a lot of good fathers and, and, um, and um, husbands out there, mm -hmm. you know. But... Um, that is what, um, because of the hard times that we've been facing, especially in the last two years yeah. since 2020, mm -hmm. then um, there's been so much, um, the enemy, so much destruction that the enemy has come towards the family and the body of Christ mm -hmm. and, and everything. And so um, one thing is healing. Another thing that I pray over is um, uh, protection. And, yes. and I always, uh, va I call it uh, vaccinating um, my family and, and uh, myself with Psalm 91, mm. morning and night. Mm, um, mm -hmm. I believe in, in pleading the blood of Jesus yes. over you and your family yes. day and night. Yes. When you get in the car, you know, plead the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And, and, you know, um, just everything that Jesus did for us, mm -hmm. uh, take advantage of those uh, promises. Right. Take advantage, believe the word of God, yes. believe the promises. Yes. and be in the Word of God. And it's not out of works. Trust me, I came from a um, background of works, right. you know, because I was raised in that, that old-time Pentecost where, yeah. you know, the do's and the don'ts, right. you know. We all <laughs> loved God. Thing. Yeah, we all loved God <laughs> sincerely. Right. But we felt like we had to earn brownie points. Yeah, To get totally. God to love us. And totally. I was like, no, look what Jesus did yeah. for us. Yeah. You know, and so that is another thing. It's like um, it's been a big process of of getting out of the, the works mentality and exactly. getting out of a judgmental, critical spirit, getting yes. rid of that. And and uh, and so that that's some of the things the Lord has healed me from. Yeah. And I want to see that healing and freedom yes. in people I minister to and pray for. Yeah. So I went through the same thing. And, you know, we were trained to judge on sight. Yeah. Which is not good. I know. I know. And I would walk down the, the sidewalk and I'd say, Lord, I don't want to look at people like this. I don't want to <laughs> be like this. I don't want to be judgmental. Please change. And it took a while. It was a process, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for that religious spirit to leave, yeah. right? Because that's what it is. It's a religious, yep. you know, in that mindset. And, and we were talking about this earlier, the pleasure of the Lord. Mm. So... So many times we still tend to go towards that works mentality yeah. and we're like, Lord, I didn't do anything for you. Why am I feeling the pleasure of the Lord right now? Yeah. And it's, he just wants to love on mm -hmm. us. You know, it he does. Does. it's not things that we do. Mm -mm. He no. loves us unconditionally, Amen. which is hard for people to fathom. I know. I know. <laughs> you know, I get it now. He loves me. I get it. But it took a long time to understand that I didn't have to work for that because... The way I was raised is, you know, he was this guy with a big stick. Yes. And if you did something yes. wrong, look out. Mm -hmm. You were going to get whacked with that stick. Yes. And it wasn't going to be favorable, you know. Yes. And that's a scary way to live. It that's is. not a loving God. No. Right? No, it's not. It's not. Well, and the sad thing is my parents were never like that. I was raised in a, a well, wonderful home. So my, my natural or my adopted dad didn't do that to us, but he was raised that way. Mm. And his family parents were raised that way, mm. you know, where you had to earn God's love. You had to mm -hmm. be perfect. You had, yeah. you know, yeah. and so it's, it's not that my parents were mean or, or authoritative as far as that, you know, yeah. they, they raised me in God in the, in the admonition of God, but yeah. But they were raised that way. Yes. And so I'm just so grateful that, okay, Lord, we, we see how much you love us yes. and that you heal us and provide for us and, and take care yes. of us because we're your children. Right. And we've, we, we're in a new covenant, a, a covenant with better promises. Right. Yes. And I mean, if you think about it, what child or what parent, if, if a little toddler falls over because they're just learning how to walk, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to go, you're stupid, you're dumb, right. you're not going to... You're right. not going to knock them down while they're down, right? <laughs> no, a loving parent is going to help you back up yes. and encourage you, Yes. right? Yes. You can do this. Come on. That's you know, right. Keep you going, right? That's right. That's God. That's the love of the Father and much, much more, much more than our mind can fathom. Yes. 
is the love of God, right? That's right. We're undeserving, but He loved us. He does. And He sent His Son to die for us. He does. Right? Uh, and on a daily basis to remind myself, um, I'll read 1 John 4 where it says, God is love. Mm. Not that He has love. He is love. Yes. And whoever lives in love lives in God yes. and God in Him. So I constantly say that. I'll read it out loud and say, okay, God, you are love. Yes. And whoever, I'm the whoever, I live in love or I walk in love yes. and I live in you and you live in me. Yes. And so to be honest, it's been a constant renewal of my mind mm -hmm. to get that down in my spirit. Mm -hmm. um, because like, like we said, you and I both had to face that and yeah. overcome yeah. that works mentality. Yeah. 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 And it, it's, it's a, it's a battle. It's a battleground in the mind. You know, mm -hmm. the battlefield is in the mind. It That's is. Meyer says. <laughs> yeah, it's that daily renewing, Thank and you know. um, but you know, then it becomes it's it's easy. It's not a fight anymore. It's no, just, exactly. Yeah, it's just your being, your being, yes. your being. Exactly. Well, I used to think, okay, I have to read and pray an hour. I have to, you know, I have to do <laughs> this. Is now this is how I was yeah, raised. Yeah, okay, nothing yeah. against my my parents. They yeah. were wonderful, yeah. godly parents and mm -hmm. pastors and everything. Mm -hmm. But that's just how we were all raised yes. back then. Yes, you know, and so. Um, I have to read an hour. I have to pray an hour. I have mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, Lord, I'm in your word, reading your word to build my, uh, feed my faith, feed my spirit, yes. build my faith yes. and renew my mind. Yes. And, and so I really don't, it's a different mentality. Yeah. It's like, I love to read the word and pray mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. because I truly love the Lord in an intimate walk with him. Right. You know, it's a fellowship with him yes. that's not based on any works or, right. or um, uh, you know, you have to do that. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very good grounding. And there's, there is a discipline involved. Oh, definitely. Because there's so many things that can steal your time. Distractions. Yes. <laughs> and our flesh. Our phone. Just, yes. Uh, and our phones. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I have to like put it aside and like, don't look at your text messages uh -huh. until you get through the word and yes. your brain stuff. And you know, I've even, this may sound to some people, but I have a list. And because I found myself forgetting to pray, I want to always cover certain people in prayer. Mm -hmm. I just want to. That's mm -hmm. my heart. Mm -hmm. And God honors that, mm -hmm. you know. But I had to make myself a list, and I have to physically put that list in front of me. And it's even fun if you have pictures oh, of that person. Oh, good idea. So if you have pictures of that person, you're like, you see them, and you're you're praying over them, you know, like my grandkids mm -hmm. and my kids and, mm -hmm. you know, my spouse and my uh -huh. pastor, whoever, you uh -huh. know. I'm praying for people on a daily basis. But, um, you know, and I... I love that. And I love to know that people are praying for me. Yes. Right? Yes. It just gives you that comfort to know, hey, I'm covered. Yes. You know, God covers us too, but it's good to know that we cover one another in prayer. There is power in prayer. Uh-huh. And in agreement. And in agreement. Yep. And even James 5 says, pray for others that you may be healed. And that is a spiritual principle wow. I stand on because, like I said, I've been kind of going through, um, I have, not kind of, I've been going through some physical health challenges. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's like, Lord, you know what? You said in your word yes. in two different places. And it even says in Job how um, he, God restored the fortunes of Job yes. because he prayed for his friends. Come on. Yes. See, and so that's a principle um, of two scriptures or more, or yes. two, you know, two witnesses or more. Yeah. So I, I do I do the same thing. I have a list. Mm -hmm. And um, Mondays is my Hopefully rule. Hopefully I'm on that list. Actually, <laughs> actually Cheryl, I was going to tell you, you are. That's you okay. really are. I have about 40 people wow. on that list yeah. and ministries and stuff. I'm and too. And you're on there. Thank you. Know? you. <laughs> and so anyway, but um, I it's it's uh, Mondays is my day that I really spend time fasting and praying. And again, not out of works, right. but it's my my day that I can do that. Yeah. And so I'm I'm sitting on the couch, going over my list, mm -hmm. going over the scriptures, mm -hmm. going over my um, the people I'm covering in prayer yeah. and different things. And I, and I'm not saying that to brag on myself. No. Truly not. No. I'm just saying some people need to hear this because they don't really know how to do it. So we're just giving tools today. Exactly. Exactly. And encouraging them. Exactly. And I only mention it because it would be easy to just yield to the flesh and watch a movie or two on Mondays. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I was talking about. Yeah. You have to overcome your flesh, like yeah. you were saying, discipline. Yes. Yeah. You have to make yourself yeah. read and pray. Yes. But it's because you want to, not because you have to. Right. Exactly. 
And there are times God, you know, God wants you to have fun oh, too. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. <laughs> we're not talking. We're just do do do. Oh no no no, the, no 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 no. God no, wants no. you to have fun too. Oh, definitely. But He blesses you along the way. You exactly. Know? Obedience, yes. Spending time with Him. Exactly. It's all good. Oh yeah. No, trust me. I, I enjoy life too. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I enjoy movies. Right. I enjoy a, a couple of shows and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. But my, my, like I said, Mondays is my concentrated time that yeah. I really. Uh, it's like That's Lord, great. and it's not that every day isn't. It's yeah. like Lord, my day is yours, but especially the Mondays to really yeah. focus. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, like some people will have. Um, the thing that they can follow with the scripture every day to read through the word. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've done that before, but I don't, I mean, I've done that and I've mm -hmm. read through the, the word, you know, I don't know how many times through, but I will just open the word. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless he's, sometimes he'll put a scripture in my heart and mind and mm -hmm. I'll have to go Google it and look it up because I don't have them all. If I hear a certain scripture, um, or, you know, a scripture and I'm like, I don't know exactly necessarily. Sometimes I know the book it's in, so, mm -hmm. but, um, I will Google it and then look it up and then start reading. But, and s there are times mm -hmm. when he's trying to get a point across. Right. Right. I've been camped. There was, uh, at least one time I know of that for a month. Mm -hmm. I'm reading this every day. It was like the same. I'd hear the uh -huh. same. I'm like, what am I missing uh -huh. here, Lord? Uh -huh. You know, what am I missing that I'm not picking up here? Because I'm, you know, I like the scripture, but what am I missing? You know, but then there's other times when you're going through something in your life. Right. And you will read that scripture with brand new eyes and you're like, Whoa, mm -hmm. I never saw that before. And it like brings healing. Yeah. It's medicine to you. Yes. Right? Yes. So the word is so much more than just reading exactly. the word. It's alive. It's exactly. alive. Exactly. Well, and it says the word was God. Mm -hmm. The word is God. I'm misquoting it. Can you quote it better? Uh, John 1, 1. <laughs> yes. Yes. In the beginning was the Word, and the, words, yeah, the Word was God, and the Word um, is God. Or whatever. Yes. Yes. I'm just <laughs> quoting it at the time, too. But, um, so no, it's alive, and it's well. It is. You know? It is. It's alive. And so, yeah, there's so many things that we can get out of the Word. And, you know, I even, this is what something I do. I didn't know we'd go into this, but this is kind of fun teaching. Mm -hmm. So I have a Quest Study Bible. Mm -hmm. So if I don't fully understand or if I want to get to know even more about something, mm -hmm. I will open it up in that Quest Study Bible where there are side notes. Oh. And at the bottom as well, they've got, you know, like, what were the customs of the day oh, back then? Yes. Okay. Yep. You know, that's what this is talking about. This isn't saying women are to be silent in the church, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. There's certain things you need to understand about the Word yeah. and how it's written, right? So I always like to do that. And then the Passion. Do you ever read that? Yes, I do read the Passion. Oh, my I gosh. Know, I know. My favorite verse in that is um, in the Passion is yeah. Ephesians 3.20. Because mm -hmm. it says, uh, now to him is able to do yes. exceedingly abundantly. Well, in the Passion, it yeah. explodes it. Yes. I don't have it fully memorized oh. yet. But uh, look that up if you have a Passion Bible. We Ephesians should look 3, that 20. up. You know what? <laughs> I will look that up right now, actually, because mm. it is really good in the passion. It is. It is. Uh, it starts out, never doubt God's ability Ooh. or something like that. Um, like I said, I don't have a total mem mem uh, memorized, but yeah. I go to the passion for Ephesians 3.20. There's a few really good ones. Oh, in the there's passion. a lot of good ones um, in the passion. The passion. Let me look it up. Oh, I picked up a little critter here. Well, and while you're looking that yes, up, yes. Um, since we're talking about this, I love this subject. Yes. Um, everyone learns differently. And so how you um, uh, read and retain and learn um, the Bible will yes. be different than me. Uh, yes. Some of us learn better by reading it. Other, we're visual. Yes. Others are by audio. You Good. hear it, audio. Good. You know, like um, my son is very visual, you know, yes. and, and my sister is too. And yeah. then my daughter, so she does a little bit of both, you know, but I'm very, um, I want to see it. You yeah. know, yeah, I want to hear it because faith comes by hearing, but I want right. to see the scripture and read it out loud. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, you're good. I, yeah. I love what you're saying. So Ephesians 3.20 in the Passion says, never doubt God's mm -hmm. mighty power to work in you mm -hmm. and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest yeah. request 
your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest. I should have. Uh, I think it says imagination. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. he will outdo them all for his miraculous power mm -hmm. constantly energizes you. Isn't that awesome? Isn't I, it? That has my, been my scripture for the last four years, oh. 2018. Especially that last sentence, he will energize you yes. because that's what I need. Fighting Don't fatigue we all? And, and things. <laughs> yes, so right. Lord, I look to you for yes. your energy. <laughs> spirit, soul, and body. Yes. And socially and in your marriage. Yes. And every area of uh, your life you need to be energized. Amen. By his power. <laughs> Amen. That's a very good word. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, so back to the learning. I like what you said because yeah. um, the, you, you can read a scripture over and over and not get anything, but then if you're going through a trial, yes. then it's like it'll, it'll pop out at you. And Because yes. I've done the same as you. You know, you've read through the Bible yes. or you've done it topically, you know, uh, healing scriptures, right. heal, uh, provision right. scriptures, protection scriptures. Yes. Okay, there, every way, there's no bad or wrong way to read the Word right. or get into the Word. Right. And so, um, and a lot of times I'll, I'll ask the Holy Spirit, okay, Lord, what do you want me to read today? And I'm sure you've done this, you yes. do the same thing. Yes. Because um, I used to be where, okay, I had to read so much a day, but now the Lord mm. says, no, Melody, if you're if you're communing with me on a daily basis, yeah. then ask me what I want, you know, because what, what he tells you that day through the word, you may end up be ministering that to someone later in the day. Exactly. You never know. You never know. That's true. Mm -hmm. Or when you're going to need that scripture that will come back to you to fight something Exactly. Right? Yeah. You know, another thing is, um, I'll just open the Word sometimes and I get songs. You know, most of my songs, well, all of my songs are backed up with the Word of God. But sometimes I'll start hearing a tune, a melody, whatever, uh -huh. to the words I'm, you know, reading. Wow. And so, and, and a beat and whatever, and then I have to sing into my phone mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. to retain it because I have to, it's going to be work to turn that into a song. But you know, it's just fun. I mean, it is. It's alive. It's, yes. You just never know. I've got visions <laughs> from just opening the Word of God. All of a sudden, I'll go into wow. a vision. I'm like, wow. Wow. You know, so there's power in the Word of God. Yep. People lost their lives that you would have that Word of God in front of you. Exactly. People have been martyred for exactly. the Word of God in front of you, right? Yes. And there are people in foreign countries that would give their life or parts of their body just to be able to sit down and read the word that we have so easy access yes. to that we don't even realize and appreciate. Yes. You know. But. Well, and that's what I love about your your songs. They're so anointed oh, and based you. on the word of God. And uh, so the songs that I sing are not worthy to record like you do, <laughs> but Aww. I do, I do. I have that time with, I just will sing a melody and sing some words that just come out of my spirit. And then um, I haven't been recording them. So then it's like, oh Lord, I forgot what I sang yesterday, <laughs> that kind of thing. You, you know? got it. You got to do it. You have to do it. I know. You know, Uda, do you know Uda? No, she's, I've never met her. Okay. So <laughs> she's like 87 and good friends with Vicky. She sends a little voice clip every day. It's a little song of the Lord that the Lord gives her every single day. Oh, wow. Sometimes he gives her more than one. She'll just sing this sweet little, it's almost like a little chorus, Aww. sweet little song. And it's just like, it's so beautiful. Aww. You know, because you're, she's hearing from heaven. Exactly. And she's spreading joy. Yes. You know, because it's all about the word and what she's singing. And yes. it's just so precious oh, that, that is she awesome. does that. Yeah. And there was a time when she got a new phone and she was having some physical problems and stuff, and she wasn't able to. And I was like, gosh. And then when they started coming again, I go, I didn't realize how much I missed that little song Aww. every day from Udo. Yes. It's really sweet. Oh, so what the Lord is ministering to her, it is to you too. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's hard to go wrong with the Word of God. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then like you were talking about, some people listen like they don't, they're not, you know, reading isn't their thing or they just kind of, their mind will go elsewhere if they mm -hmm. start reading. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will go to bed listening mm -hmm. to the Bible mm -hmm. on audio. Mm -hmm. And think about that. You're getting that word in you all yeah. night long. Exactly. Now, I have to have total quiet okay. <laughs> and okay. total dark when I sleep. That's me. Okay. Um, but for those people that can do that, wow. Yeah. I mean, they're really getting it. You know, another thing that I didn't really, it was kind of fun as a kid, but I didn't appreciate it like I do now. We had a thing called Bible quizzing. Okay. 
Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not. So it was co even though it was competitive. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, as a kid, you can be a little competitive, right? right you know? of I course. mean, that kind of makes it fun. You know, <laughs> can I be the winner at this? So we would have sword drills. Mm -hmm. They would call them. Okay. Because the word of God is like a sword, right. right? You know, it's the sword of the spirit. We'd have our Bibles, so you know somebody would be in charge, and they'd call out a scripture, and so we're flipping through it to find it. And whoever stood up and read it out loud first was, you know, you know, they got a point, you know. So whoever got the most points was the one who. Was, so if you were quick at looking those scriptures up, so uh -huh. you know, in my spare time, I'm like, okay, this is the Old Testament. You'd try to memorize okay. the Old Testament, memorize the books of the Bible, the New Testament, right? <laughs> so anyway, then at the age of, I don't think I did junior Bible quizzing, but at the age of 12 they had a Bible quizzing for 12 to 18 year olds. And so if your church would put, you had to have three people on a team mm -hmm. and you had these buzzers in front of you. Oh. And we got smart and started taping them down because sometimes the buzzer would move. But anyway, <laughs> there would be a book in the Bible you had to memorize. Now here's the thing. Back then my memory was really good. I could read a scripture three times and have it memorized. Oh, wow. And you couldn't add an S if there wasn't an S. I mean, you had to quote it exactly. No, the King James Version? King okay. James Version. Right. Okay. This is before New King James yes. came out. <laughs> and so you had to know the word. You had to memorize it. So, so they would ask a question, and you had to hit that buzzer. You had to say the scripture reference mm -hmm. and then quote it within 60 seconds without wow. an error okay and so I got to really learn and you know it's tricky this is smart on whoever came up with this because you're as a kid that's probably the last thing you want to think about is necessarily picking I'm being serious uh -huh. and honest uh -huh. a lot of kids would rather be on this uh -huh. okay for hours then they would pick up the Word of God, but it was a way to get the Word of God. We didn't have the cell phones back then right, either. Right, right. We no. had the old dial-up, right? Right. But to get you in the Word, that mm -hmm. was pretty smart on their part because yep. you're having to memorize the Word, and that Word is still in me. Mm -hmm. There are still certain ones, you know, a city yeah. that is set on a hill cannot be hid, Matthew 5, 14. Oh, okay, wow. so Matthew was one of the books we had to learn. First Corinthians was wow. one of the books we had to learn. So know you not that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is of God. And, you know, I mean, all these different things that we had to memorize mm -hmm. still will come to me at times, you know, even the old hymns, wow. which has nothing to do really right. with the word. But I still, I, I always swear that I have an angel that hangs out at my house that was my mother's angel because some of those old songs that she used to oh, sing. Oh, play, I love those. Well, come to me. I know. Same here. <laughs> same here. It's like, okay, yeah. I think there's an angel in here hanging out. Yeah. But, yeah. So the Word of God is powerful. Yes. You know, it's powerful. It it's is. like a two edged sword, right? Uh -huh. It cuts to the bone and marrow. Yep. And, um, what would we do without the Word oh, of God? Oh, my goodness. Right? I'm just so grateful. Yeah. Yep. It feeds us. It builds us up in our spirit. Yes. You know, it tells us things and, and those scriptures that come to mind. And what? A guidebook to live by. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. And if you need encouragement, come on. If you need some wisdom, <laughs> open up the book of Proverbs. That's right. Come on. Oh, do Song of Solomon, Proverbs and Song of Solomon in the Passion. Oh, yes. Well, and obviously Psalms, but yes. um, but for something different, if you want, you know, it's like in the Passion, those two books come alive. Yes, yes, yeah. totally. And I remember the first thing I ever heard out of the Passion was Psalm 91. Oh, oh I know. Wow. I know, I know. I mean, it brings it to a whole different level. You're like, wow, really? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find it on here, but it's... So going back to the competitions, yes. did you win a lot of times? Actually, we did win. Um, yes. So we would win locally. Mm -hmm. We actually went to nationals one oh, year. Oh, wow. Now, this is funny. I got... I'm going to tell on myself because I got a little bit... Uh, <laughs> We got a little arrogant in our winning. We thought we were really something. So we didn't really um, study like we should have once we won at the oh, the regional level. Because okay. it was a camp meeting okay. against different churches, right. right? So we won. 
Okay, then we had to go to Texas. Wow. And I remember this guy that I work with, and he goes, oh, you're amongst all the Bible thumpers. You didn't have a chance in the Bible belt to win. And I'm like, but see, I didn't look at it that way. I thought, oh, we're good. Uh -huh. You know, we don't have to, we know this stuff, you know. Well, no, we got a whole bunch of different questions. We were not So pride ready. goes before a fall. <laughs> you got it. The one thing that was fun, it was Fort Worth, Texas. We got oh. to go to a um, safari, a wildlife safari. That was a blast. Uh. I have pictures and memories. So, you know, these are things as a child that, you know, they're memories that will be with me forever. Right. But it's, it's centered around the Word of God, right? Yeah, that's right. Because the Word of God is what drew us together. Yes. You know? Yeah. And that's what we were studying and learning. Even though we didn't realize, it seemed like more of a competition thing, mm -hmm. but it was still the Word getting in it, us. It is. Right? It's, yep, that foundation <laughs> is still down there yes. in your spirit. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Hmm. Yeah. So we have a little bit of time here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read... This is so beautiful. Psalms 91. Mm, in the Passion. In the Passion. Mm. Whoever lives within the secret shadow of Shaddai, hidden in the strength of God Most High, will always be kept safe and feel secure. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me and my great confidence. Amen. Yes, he will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy, and he will protect you from false accusation yeah, right. and any deadly curse. Yes. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His faithfulness is a wrap around shield. You know, I pray this daily. When I go on my walk, mm -hmm. Um, I pray my armor, you know, mm -hmm. and he's shown me my armor many mm -hmm. times and, and it's changed even. But I go, I always throw that in and you're my wrap around wow. shield, Lord. That's awesome. Right? Yes. That nothing can get through. Nothing can penetrate that wrap around shield. Thank you, Lord. Keeping me from harm. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night. That's right. Not have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Whether by day or by night, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor the powers of evil launched against you. Mm -hmm. What does it say? The weapons will be formed, but they cannot prosper. prosper. Isaiah right. 54. That's right. Yes. So even in a time of disaster with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain unscathed and unharmed. You will be as a spectator, as the wicked perish in judgment, for you will still be safe and secure. When we live our lives within the shadow of God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against mm -hmm. us or disease infect us? Mm -hmm. God will send his messengers, angels with special orders, yes to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. Right. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. For here is what the Lord has spoken. Because you have chosen to be my great lover, I have chosen to greatly protect you. Mm -hmm. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my face. I will answer your cry for help every time yes. you pray. Yes. And you will find and feel my presence. That's right. Even in your time of pressure and trouble. That's right. I will be your glorious hero and give you success. You will be satisfied with a full life and with all that I do for you. For you will feast your eyes on the fullness of salvation, drinking deeply of me. Wow. Amen. That was like a big drink right there. That is. That is. At the very beginning, um, yeah. one of the first couple of verses that you said about yeah. um, there shall be no false accusation against yes. me. You know, if you're if someone is going through, which I, I don't know in my spirit, but but if someone out there listening is going through a legal battle or someone is coming against you and and they definitely are in the wrong and and they're accusing you of something that you didn't do. Yes. It says in Jeremiah 119 that he um, uh, it says they will prevent 
prevail or they will try to go against you, but they will not prevail. Good, yes. You know, and so, and that's one of the scriptures I've stood on yes. um, just recently too. And it's like, Lord, um, the enemy yeah. will try to fight against me, but they will not prevail. Amen. For I'm your God and I'm with you. Amen. If you want to look that up, Jeremiah 1, 19. Good. You know, so that goes yes. along with that. Yes. And then obviously the, the biggies for um, Psalm 91 is um, the in the Passion, it says, how shall disease infect us? Right. Well, I love the, the the plain old King James Version too, where it says, no sickness, uh, uh, no evil shall befall you, yes. neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Amen. For he gives his angels charge over you. Yes. And and so I always say, no plague, no COVID, no, not Amen. even the common cold or flu shall Amen. come near us. Amen. You know? And so you just speak that over your, your children yes. and grandchildren and your family daily. Yes. And uh, so that that's one of my favorite psalms that you yes, just read. Yes. And then sometime too, when you have time, read Psalm 121 in the Passion. Okay. And uh, I love the way it says there, especially at the very end of it, because it's talking about protection, that you will leave mm. your home and you will return to your home safely. Oh, man, that is so good. Yeah, so I use that one for protection all the time too. Okay, I'll have to write that one down. <laughs> well, friends, this has been so fun. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. I wanted you to pray, but it's we're, we ran that's out of time. Okay. But I want to thank you so much for your time today, Melody, especially for your prayers and what you showed us today. Mm. You know, intercession is a beautiful thing, yes. and I just appreciate the way the Lord uses you in those ways. Aww. So thank you for your time. And friends, stay tuned for the next God Encounters, but until then, stay blessed and highly favored and covered by the Lord.